Hello, everybody. Uh, Mark Maxwell here at Maxwell's House of Music. I like to interview interesting people, and um, you may leave. <laughs> you have to leave now. <laughs> I'm sitting here with a friend of mine. His name is Jesse Vest. I've known him since he was a kid. Um, I find Jesse to be a very interesting guy, uh, specifically when it has to come uh, comes down to music. So. You guys, maybe some of you, understand that he plays bass in a band that's locally or from around here right now. But in his previous life, when he was a younger man, he played in a band called Days of the New. Days of the New um, were a platinum-selling band. They also, am I right about that? Actually, uh, technically, it might be double platinum by now. I don't know that, though. Crazy. Um, so, Jesse, you're from Charlestown. Yes. Don't hold it against me. I love Charlestown. So do I. I know you do. Um, how old were you when you... Tell me about the beginnings of Days of the New real quick. Well, I mean, the, the beginning of Days of the New was the beginning of me playing. Uh, like, I got a bass the same day that uh, Travis, who was the lead singer and guitar player, the same day he got a guitar. Like, we started playing the same day, and he was better than I was off the bat, had more talent for it. So I kind of fed off of him, and we learned from each other, and we got uh, Matt to play drums for us. And, you know, I, I rode home on, uh, on the back of Matt's scooter one day from school to his house uh, to check out his practice pad, because Matt's dad had a band. You remember? Oh, yeah. Then he had Get Back Band, and they rehearsed at Matt's house, and so there was the, all the equipment was set up, and uh, so Travis and Matt and I got together and played, and we were probably maybe 11 or 12 years old, something like that, first time we got together and played. And what, what stuff were you playing? What kind of stuff? I mean, it was Metallica, because that was when the Black Album just came out, so... Everything was Inner Sandman, Sad But True, like every song on that album, it, that's the first music we really were playing. That's pretty crazy. Pretty intense stuff and hard to play. Yeah, but, you know, it's, if you learn to do things that are that's, difficult, right. they don't seem difficult. Right. When you're a kid, your brain is so malleable and pliable. Now if I try to learn a dif difficult song, it's really hard. Right. Back then, it was like nothing. It was like you can do anything when you're young. Right. People take it for granted. I do take it for granted. Listen to this, kids. So, listen, you guys put Days of the New together. You uh, write a bunch of songs. You record a bunch of songs. Somebody comes to town and sees you guys play, gives you a record deal. Is that how it works? Yeah, that's the short version. And you guys were how old at that time? <clears throat> I mean, when, when we first got spotted by the people who had turned out to be our management team, I think I was a freshman in high school. I might have been a sophomore. Um, we were playing in a bar that we none of us were anywhere near old enough to be playing in. I was the oldest guy in the band. Seriously? Yeah, by like a year. Wow. So it was me and then Matt and then Travis. And um, so we, we met the guys who would, like I said, eventually turn out to be our management team. And um, we picked up Todd randomly because there was so much guitar work that needed done um, in the stuff we were writing. And then when we got Todd, we wrote even more stuff. and. It just kind of snowballed once he got in the picture. So they get a record deal, they go out, they start touring. They make a record, and then they go tour. Who'd you tour with? Who didn't we tour with? Really? That's the better question. I mean, anybody who, I mean, we, we toured with all kinds of people from, from Errol Smith to Kid Rock to everybody who was anybody at that point in time. And, and to tell you how sort of how fortunate we were it was in the, I think it was the spring of 1998 where they came to us and they said, listen guys, summer tour is coming up and you have two options. You can either be the opening act for Van Halen or you can be the opening act for Metallica. Wow. And we picked Metallica. Yeah, you see, I would have gone the Van Halen way because that was earlier in my day. Metallica was exactly what you guys were. Metallica so. was exactly what, and to be honest, in hindsight, no matter who you're a fan of, it turned out to be the right choice because that specific tour of Van Halen was the one, the album they did with Gary Sharon, which kind of was a turd. Wow. And it flopped, you know? So, but it didn't matter. It could have been anybody, and we were going to pick Metallica. So. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Wow. So that band breaks up after the first record at some point, to a certain degree. We'll say that. The, the, let me just, let's put it this way. The entire lifespan of Days of the New was one long breakup. It was just a, you know, like, I don't know if anybody can relate, but if you ever have like a crazy girlfriend, right? and at some point you're like, you know what, it's probably time to get out of here, but you just keep staying around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Days of the New was. It was one long breakup. Should have ended a long time before it did, but it didn't. So. All right. So then the three uh, other members of the band, which was Matt and um, you and Todd, mm -hmm. go look for another singer. Mm -hmm. You find this kid out of Michigan named Hugo. Right. We tried to get you to do it. You wouldn't do it. That is not true. That is not true. So um, you got that, and you start the band Tantric, which was signed to then Maverick Records, correct? Yes. That record came out, did well with that too. I think it went gold. It, it went gold, and you know the, the discrepancy between the sales of the Days of New album and the Tantric album, I accredit most of that to Napster because Tantric had just as many singles that did as well on radio. We had, we did just as well touring, you know, headlining our own, show, our own shows. We had basically the same size crowds as Days of the New when we were headlining. And, but we didn't sell as many albums. And I think it's the internet, that's the point where the internet was coming in and stealing all the albums. Yeah, a lot of the kids don't know what Napster was, but Napster came along and shared, you know, files of songs. I mean, it's it's pretty it much was a, it was a different day yeah it it's, a, it's like it was spotify it was spotify but the artists weren't getting paid at all instead at, of getting paid very little right now at least the, at least through spotify or amazon music or apple music the the artist gets paid some money with napster they were just stealing everything just stealing they really were so but that's <laughs> what started the whole process in the first place and they they figured out that hey man i want to listen to this record and i don't want to pay for it i can listen to it at napster and that was a big deal. Uh, it was a whole mess for a it long time. It was a big time. deal, but yeah, you, like you said, nobody knows what Napster is anymore. But it was a, it was a huge bomb that exploded in the music industry, for about a five-year period, and nobody knew what to do with it. Yeah. So anyway, to get it's back gotten to, healthier. It, well, yeah. Like yeah. I said, I mean, at least I'm getting paid now. Right. I wasn't getting paid from Napster. Right. Which uh, Jesse still gets a thing called mailbox money, which I find very interesting. He walks out in his underwear to his mailbox and he gets a check and sometimes it's as low as I'm just a few dollars no, they, up like, to good dollars. My neighbors don't let me walk out to my mailbox in my underwear anymore. But <laughs> uh, used to be. It, yeah, I mean I've gotten checks literally for like two cents. Like <laughs> it costs them more to mail me the check than the check was worth. <laughs> Oh, that's um, but I'll, I've also gotten checks that were substantially larger. Yeah. And I, it's the type of thing where most of the time it's in this sort of medium range that's predictable. To, but every once in a while you'll get one that's really low or you get one that's really high. And, it, and it's like a gamble, you know. Never know what's going to happen. I, I, I can't complain because I'm getting money for something that I did when I was, you know, 20 years ago. Right. So yeah. I'm all right with that. It is good. All right. So then uh, you leave the tantric band and then pretty much everybody else left that band too after you took off you took off and then everybody just started filing out the door it, it wasn't quite that simple but that's how effectively that's what it was I, I mean i left the band for my own personal reasons in 2004 probably uh and the band without me actually went in and recorded a third album and and todd played bass on that third album um I don't know the internal workings of what happened, but I think the album got shelved. Uh, there was a the record industry at any point in time, whether you're talking about the 60s or today, it's a very shady, uh, sketchy kind of industry. So you can spend a lot of time and money creating something and the label can just shut it down and you kind of get screwed on it. And I think that's what happened with Tantric's third album. Mm. And then after that, yeah, I think once the once the label put the kibosh on the third album, I think everybody kind of went their separate ways, and um, and that was the story of that. Basically, any band that I'm not in anymore is it becomes instantly unsuccessful. 
That's why we've kept him all this time. So certain people need to keep that in mind if they think about getting somebody maybe better or better looking or maybe a better dancer. I don't know if we could top you on any of those. I don't either, really. <laughs> anyway. I'm pretty incredible. Well, that's very interesting. I think a lot of people want to know more about you, and you don't talk very much. Um, well, when you, when you talk about the things that come up when you ask me questions, like these things we just discussed, if, if I talk about them, it's very easy to seem like I'm trying to brag because I did get to do some really cool stuff. Yeah. And I don't, I have a hard enough time fitting in socially and making sure I'm saying the right things. I don't need to, to come across that way as sort of braggadocious or, or like I've got a big ego because that's not really what I am at all. I agree. I'm, I'm not at all. So I don't talk about it very often unless somebody asks me pointed questions about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it feels like, feels like it was somebody else. A lifetime ago? Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. you know, I was reading this thing the other day. That's a lie. I don't read anymore. I was listening to this podcast the other day. and uh, Hey, coming from a guy who used to read a book a day kind of I thing. I used to read crazy. constantly, and I've got a huge library in my house of books that never get touched or read, and it's right. Pretty but sad. you're in the podcast now because you, you're because it's easy. Busy. They're much easier to digest right. because you can do it while you're driving, whatever. Um, but I was listening to this podcast the other day, and they were talking about how basically, you know, I, I just said it feels like it happened to somebody else, like it wasn't even me. It really did happen to somebody else because, like, your every cell in your body gets replaced about every seven years. So every seven years, you are literally all the matter in your body is completely new. So you have the memories and you have, you know, but you, you're you literally not the same physical being you used to be. Brooks, there's ho hope for you now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Give it seven years, man. It's going to be great. He's <laughs> 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 watching his watch. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, that's very interesting. Uh, you know... Again, I, yeah, you don't talk about yourself very often, but I, I'm glad that we got to sit down and talk just a little bit, cause I, and I'm glad you came here to do so. I, you know, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people in this town that need to know that there's great people in town who have done really cool things in their life. You're one of those people that have done really cool things, and, and I can't, I, you know, I just wanted to share it with, uh, you know, the people that, that, that love to play music, you know, and want to know more about it. Um, you know, now you're playing with one of the best lead singers in the entire world. Wow. Wow. Talk about uh, coming across as egotistic. <laughs> no, um, listen, here's the thing. Uh, I, I, I feel very blessed. You know, you and I have been friends. For a very long time. We really have. And uh, I feel really good that we're in a band together. And it's been 11 years. And I don't expect, you asked me at dinner a couple of years ago, hey, how long are you think it's gonna last? And I think, and I said, Oh, I, I could do this till I'm 75, you know, another 25 years. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, man, if we don't die. That's the real thing that we got to make sure that everybody is staying healthy. Anybody, anybody in the band who's watching this. Because <laughs> they're the sure. only ones watching the band. Yeah. Well, Howard can't figure out how to work his phone to uh, watch it. That's true. He but uh, no, I, I, I'm very thankful. You know, people ask me. You know, do I miss, you know, touring and, and doing things sort of more on a national or international level? And I don't. Like, I don't miss it at all, and that's not an exaggeration or a lie in any form. Like, when I go, I play with the Crashers. I go on stage. I know everybody's going to be there on time. I know they're not going to be drunk. I know they're not going to be fighting with their wife on the stage. I know they're not going to try to punch me, and I'm not going to try to punch them. There's all these things that, that my life used to be so crazy in these certain ways. And now I get to go, I get to play good music with good musicians and good guys that I like. And then I get to go sleep. Most of the time I get to go sleep in my own bed every night instead of having to stay in a hotel or some bus or, yeah. you know. Well, you know, it's funny because musicians all think that uh, being on the road is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, well, it is when you're 19. Right. You know, it, when you're when you're 29, maybe not so much. Like, it, it, as you progress in age and, and your priorities change, um, you want more out of life than, you know, maybe a hot shower every other day and, you know, catering backstage, which is usually nasty. It's, like, it's, a, it's not an ideal lifestyle. Yeah. It, it's great 
for about 75 minutes a day while you're on stage. And then the rest of it kind of sucks. Interesting, isn't it? Well, thanks for uh, talking. Uh, we've probably gone too far, uh, just as uh, I try to keep this as a tent. I thank, didn't get thank, you any Thanks for this great coffee. <laughs> you really take care of your guests here on this show. Sorry. We're not like Letterman or something, that we don't really have stuff in there. Um, anyway, thanks, Jesse Vest, for You're coming on the, t on the podcast show. Broke my hand. Uh, peace and love to everybody. <laughs>